So now it's time to put everything together and use the slope and the intercept and residuals and all of it in a real life context and also be able to find the values ourselves. Wouldn't that be great? So we're going to find the least squares regression line. There's a typo. <laughs> least squares regression line um, for the following data set. So we've seen this data set before. This is the real life data set of the free reduced lunch and the percent passing the math exam in Sandusky, Ohio. And just a reminder, we always put X in the left hand column and Y in the right hand column. Just kind of standard for our course. And here's the scattergram and you can see the regression model right there. So we want to know how to find it. That's our first job. <laughs> so we're going to compute the line of best fit and we're going to use StatCrunch to do it. Okay, so remember this data set is in StatCrunch. Um, you can find it just by hitting, um, sorry, going to data sets and typing free reduced. If I remember, I'll put it in the description for this video as well. But there it is, free reduced. So click on that and there you have it. And you find this the same way that you found the correlation coefficient. Stat, regression, simple linear. There it is, as simple as that. So I'm going to click that, then I choose the x variable and the y variable and say compute. Now remember, this is a really big box and there's a lot of information. This bottom box f from inside this box, inside this window, is useless for you, so you can just get rid of it. There's actually an arrow over here if you want to see it. That's the same graph that we're looking at. So the arrow lets you get over to see the graph and then you can go back. All right, so the bottom box is useless, so I'm just going to kind of close that off. The top part has everything we need. The regression line is right there. After it says what the y variable and the x variable are, then it's saying y, because that's the y variable, equals 69.108, take away, because that's a subtraction, 0.282 and some change times x. That's the x variable. It tells us so right here because the independent variable is the x variable. Now, writing this down on a sheet of paper, we would never write those y variables and x variables so long. <laughs> that would just be annoying. So we're going to write it out um, the way that we see it on there. So we'd say y hat. And, and just a little side note, as a student, don't get confused about why is y hat? Why isn't it y? So the y values are these real values. These are the y's. Y hats are the line. So if you look at it, the dots, the, their y values of the dots are the y's. That's why we call the line a y hat. Now, your professor is probably not going to take any points off or anything, so I wouldn't worry about it too much. But it technically is a y hat if it's the line and not the dots. So y hat is 69.108 take away 0.2 eight three if we round it because it was two eight two five x that is the regression equation right there that is the line of best fit let me write our stat crunch path i'm going to write it up here just so i have a little bit of space to move here so stat crunch path obviously you enter the data first but then you go to stat regression and then simple linear. And then down below, I'm going to ask questions like, what's the slope and what's the y-intercept, right? So the slope is always the one that's multiplied by the x. So that's the slope right there. And the y-intercept is always 0, comma that number, right? So 69.108. So I can actually put those values down here. The slope is negative 0.283. It's negative because there's a negative sign. The y-intercept will be 0, 69.108. Now, many of you have taken algebra class and you don't like this <laughs> because statistics doesn't write lines the same way that algebra does. So statistics writes them this way, and if you're comfortable writing it this way, then hooray, hurrah, <laughs> it's lovely. But if you're not comfortable because you've been in a lot of algebra classes in your life, don't despair. Um, a lot of algebra students are used to seeing this in reverse order. 
they're used to seeing the slope first and then the y-intercept because they get it beaten into their brain by their algebra teacher that it's y equals mx plus b, right? So if you want y equals mx plus b, I'm just going to write a big or after this, right? Or, <laughs> and then if you're going to write it that way, it would be y equals, or y hat, of course, because the real y's are the ones in the table. So it'd be y hat equals, and then the slope, right, that's the negative 0.283x plus 69.108. Write it whichever way you are comfortable. So the slope is that number, right? That's the slope. The slope is always the one that's attached to the x variable. And the y-intercept value, the y-value for the y-intercept, I should say, is the back number. Okay, so now let's explain what that slope means in the context of the situation. And of course, when they say to explain it, what they really want is for us to use the script. So we are going to use our script. But the script is not perfect. The script is a, kind of the guardrails, the path that we want to follow for explaining this, but it's not going to be a perfect fit. Okay, so if we go back to the script, it says, more or less, on average, if x increases by one unit, then the y is expected to increase or decrease by approximately a. Okay, for sure. All right, so I'll start off. On average, if and it said x, but I'm not going to say x. It said x in quotes, meaning I have to put the context in. And my context is the percent of students on free reduced lunch. That's x. So if the percent of students on free reduced lunch, reduced lunch, increases by 1%. All right, now just take a moment. Percent of students on free reduced lunch, that's x in context. Increases, it's always increases by one, it's always one. The percent sign is kind of our unit for this case. I mean, it would be feet or dollars or whatever, but in this case it's percent. Both of these were percent. Okay, so on average, if x, if the free reduced lunch percentage increases by 1%, then, so comma, then the y, the percent of students passing the state math exam is expected, I mean we don't know for sure, but it's expected to, and now we have to choose, right? So the percent of students passing the state math exam, that's y. Right, all of that, that's what y is, it's right here, percent passing the math test, right, is expected to, and if you look at the script, it says increase or decrease, but you don't write both of the words, you have to choose, right, so since it's a negative slope for us, we're going to choose decrease, so we'll say decrease by, and then the number, 0.283, and that would be percent as well in this case. So the percent sign there is kind of the unit, right? That right there is the slope. And then we chose decrease because the slope is negative, right? So we choose the word decrease. All right, now let's interpret the y-intercept in the context of the situation. Does it make sense or is it outside the scope of the model? Okay, well the y-intercept is always, always zero comma, and this is the thing a lot of students forget, right? But that's the thing you really have to pay attention to. Oh, I'll stick with my color coding here. So um, if x is zero, and that usually is the problem, right? Cause, right? Sometimes I'll say to you, hey, interpret, right? When I say interpret, or not me, your instructor, <laughs> if you're watching this with another instructor. So interpret, that means use the script. So you can interpret with the script the y-intercept. But then I sometimes say, don't bother interpreting, just tell me why it does not make sense. But this example, I'm actually asking for both. 
sneaky, <laughs> right? So that's your X, that's your Y. I don't know why I wrote it so far over. Okay, so what are we going to say? We're going to say if a school has no students receiving free reduced lunch. So if a school has no students receiving free or reduced lunch, we expect, or then we expect, I guess, um, it doesn't matter. We expect that school to have 69.108% of students passing the math exam. So you'll notice I'm including units here, right? There's units there with the percentage. Uh, technically, it'd be like no percent, but it's fine. No students, right? So I'm saying, hey, if x is 0, then y is your pa student's path in the math exam, right? So down here, it's y is 69, right? y equals b. Oops, sorry, my colors are off. There we have it. Now, I asked for an interpretation, so we did that, and then I asked to explain whether or not it makes sense, which it does not, right? So this does not make sense based on the context of the situation, right? So this does not make sense because no school has no one on free reduced lunch. Now one last thing before we leave this page, I want to show how to find that linear regression model with the TI calculator. But if you're not using the TI calculator, just skip ahead to the next video. All right, TI calculator folks. So let's go find the TI calculator. One second. Okay, so I went to stat edit and I entered the data. No problem. Then stat calculate number four, linear regression. So if you just hit the number four on your keypad, it'll take you there. You want whatever columns you have your data in, which I had L1 and L2. That's list one and list two. And then I go down to calculate and press enter and there it is. Now you'll notice my correlation coefficient is missing because this is a web tool so it disappears every time. But just a reminder to turn on the correlation coefficient you go to mode and you turn your stat diagnostics on by pressing enter on the on and then if you run stat calculate number linear number four linear regression then it will also give you the correlation coefficient right there. But before I leave, you'll see it's telling you the format y equals ax plus b, which is the standard algebra format. a is the negative 0.2825, b is 69.108. So those are the correct values, the same values that we got when we did it with StatCrunch. So if you want to write instructions for yourself for the TI, I'll just kind of put them up here. So for the TI calculator, you would use stat, then calc, the number four lin reg. Number four lin reg gives you this version, the, the kind of more standard um, algebra version. Number eight actually gives you this version. So it works either way, it's just kind of up to you.